coming up on show 922, Volvo set to design their own electric motors for EVs. And we'll tell you why that's important. Stick around. Also on the podcast today, the new LEVC van turns like a London taxi because it mostly is actually. Uh, Neo from China with a new battery and a European launch. And why autopilots, if it was in every car, could save four-fifths of all accidents, according to one research body. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're listening in the world. Welcome to EV News Daily. It's Martin Lee here, going through every EV story. So you haven't got to try to save your time trying to go through all the EV news to make sure that in 15, 20 minutes, that's a bit optimistic, longer most days, uh, you get all the EV news you need to know. Headline story today, Volvo says that bringing the development of EV motors in-house will allow their own engineers to make further gains in terms of energy efficiency and overall performance and further optimise electric motors and the entire electric driveline in its new models. Well, Volvo has opened a new electric motor lab in Shanghai in China, in addition to the ongoing e-motor development in Gothenburg in Sweden and state-of-the-art battery labs in China and Sweden, says the website AutomotiveManufacturingSolutions.com. Well, the Shanghai Electric Motor Lab started operations only last month in October, and it's going to focus on electric motor development for use in Volvo's fully electric and hybrid cars based on Volvo's SPA2 architecture. Uh, Jalopnik notes that because the thing about doing things in-house is that doing everything in-house is impossible, Tesla has always tried to do that. But, of course, they still get their battery cells made by Panasonic. It still puts tyre manufacturers' tyres on their car. It has scores of other suppliers, like every other mass producer of cars in the world, which is a comment less about Tesla than about Volvo and every other automaker, at the end of the day, the vast majority of consumers don't really care, says Jalopnik. And I would disagree with that phrase. I think the vast majority of consumers care deeply about how far their EV goes. And when it comes to efficiency, that is the name of the game. I, you know, Long-term listeners of this podcast uh, will hear me have banged on about this for ages. Efficiency is so key when putting an EV together. And if you're new to the show, then you know, welcome along. We've all bunched up a bit. There's room for you. Come on in. Shut the door behind you. Efficiency in electric vehicles is... It's almost everything. And sure, you can go further by putting in a larger battery pack. But if you can make your car go further, your vehicle, your bike, your bus, whatever, go further on the same amount of energy, then you're on to a winner. Because you then have the option of, well, do we sell an EV that goes further or do we reduce the size of the battery pack? The heaviest thing in an EV is the battery pack. So you make that smaller because you made your car more efficient, so you can stick with the range that you previously had, but take a few cells out, the car gets lighter. What's the thing that stops the car going further? Yeah, of course, there's resistance and aerodynamics, but also it's the weight of the car. So you make the battery lighter, the car's going to go further. It's, it's a virtuous circle, and Volvo doing this is incredibly smart. So I get the comment from that auto journalist saying, nobody cares the fact that they're bought in. They care... People care if their car goes further. And you know what? It's important for Volvo to have control over that bit. Now, do all car makers have to make their own EV motors? Not all of them, clearly. But I would say if you are serious about making great electric cars, you need to be making, if not the cells, because that's kind of a unique Tesla thing. They've been doing this 10 years. There's a head start going on. But at least a very close working relationship with your cell makers, like they have with Panasonic and the new ones. But certainly, your electric motors, your inverters, your control electronics, you need a deep understanding of how that is put together and how to continually improve them as well. And it's all well and good buying bits off a shelf, and that's fine. But you know what? If you control those bits of the the powertrain then you are in more control to make those continuous improvements. Goodness me, this is exciting stuff. Well done, Volvo. And, uh, you know, hopefully this inspires more, you know, more to do it. Of course, it's what Tesla have been doing, you know, all this time. And that's part of the struggles that they've, you know, that they've, that they've gone through and continue to go through as well. So the more that 
the cars can become more efficient. And you know what? It's as an aside. Tomorrow, I'm having a telephone conversation with an engineer in uh, in Austria. They're a a, a big supplier to auto. Uh, makers, and I won't say who they are, um, but I'm talking to an engineer about efficiency of ball bearings. Not for this podcast, by the way. I'm not going to. It's not going to be a Saturday special interview for you to listen to. But I'm just. I just want to understand more about the work that's going in on so many bits of EVs. And actually, if you can make a car go four, three, four, five miles further simply because you make something like the wheel bearings better, then you need to multiply that across many bits of the car. Anyway, that was an, that was an aside to give you an insight into my, you know, what I do in my, my free time, my spare time. <laughs> so I talk to super brain engineers about ball bearings. I'll pop a link to those stories in the show notes. The London Electric Vehicle Company, they are the people that make the, hey, we've, we've talked about Volvo, owned by Geely, now another Geely company. Uh, LEVC announced today the start of production of their new electric van. It's called the VN5, and the new model is designed, engineered, and made in their Coventry plant, the UK's only dedicated EV factory, says Fleetpoint website, based on the same architecture. It's the same vehicle as London's electric taxi. And so that means it's a range extender, pure EV range of about 60 miles, about 100 kilometers. And by the time it has the petrol engine, it'll do about 300 miles in it as well. The great thing for taxi drivers and also for, you know, delivery drivers inside urban areas is that, you know, 60 miles is pretty good before in terms of, you know, if taxis are doing lots of fares, but around central London, if you're doing drop offs and deliveries around big cities and things, you're not going a huge distance. Then you have to have a lunch break and a mandated drive a rest. And you, if you can plug in then and get another 50 or 60 miles, then the range extender never needs to come on. And, you know, if you do need to go back to the depot, use a bit of petrol. We are getting 80 or 90 percent of the way there to emissions-free transport, and actually you are reassuring those fleet buyers of actually, you know what, you've always got the petrol engine as a backup, which many of them, I think, you know, would make them feel like, okay, we're not going to run out of you know, electricity because it's a generator. Although, of course, I should point out, it's it's like the, you know, like the BMW uh, i3, the electric motors always drive the wheels. So, and you can charge it, which is is a good thing. Uh, so it's got a strong, lightweight body, has 5.5 cubic meters of cargo space. If it's two pallets in, uh, you can open the side door and, and load it that way. Or there's a split rear door at the at the back, and it's great to see that company uh, using that platform and making vans out of it, as well as uh, the London Electric Taxis. Uh, link in the show notes if you want to read more. Let's talk China and Neo. And according to the founder, William Lee Bin, the Chinese electric car maker Neo is working on a battery pack that has 150 kilowatt hours of capacity. Of course, Neo looking at ranges probably around ish double of what most EVs would do at the moment with a sort of 60, 70, 80 kilowatt hour pack. Of course, it then matches what you get in the best combustion engines, petrol and diesel cars that when you, you know, top them up with fuel, your your estimated range may say 600 or, or so uh, miles or 500 miles. And so when you get to that stage of, you know, looking at an EV and it has four, 500 miles, all of a sudden there's very few reasons to buy, ever buy a combustion car. Again, according to Gascu, the plans in which he was talking also included their launch in Europe becoming more concrete. We'll know more in January when they have a, uh, you know, like their day, as it were, uh, in a, a project with the codename Marco Polo. Neo are currently hiring employees for their export business to Europe. The main focus is on two of their models, the ES6 and the ES8. And uh, there's about 7,000 units to be sold in Europe uh, over the next couple of years. Not mega numbers, but even the fact that any Chinese cars are going to be sold in here and supported uh, and imported properly is a big deal, but still 7,000 is a pretty small number. Okay, moving on. How we charge our cars, the Ionity Network, the fast-charging European network, Ionity, has revealed usage data of their network over the last couple of years, from September 18 to September 2020, uh, where there were 150 stations a year ago. 200 in January, 250 in July, even despite COVID, and 300 charging stations across Europe now. And during the period, energy sales have doubled in the last year, says Inside EVs. Now, the usage chart shows us one more important thing, seasonality. So the spikes on the graph they've sent are around Christmas and summer holidays, and that's really interesting because they are peak periods 
around the holidays, long distance trips being taken by families. And, you know, if a network takes that into account, they might be able to avoid some of the longer queues at chargers, which also happen at Tesla superchargers. I don't really see them over here, but I see the pictures uh, from the US around the, the big holiday periods of people having to, to queue. I know that you sometimes have to queue uh, all year round at the really busy superchargers in the US. Um, I honestly said that the ongoing pandemic has led to a change in mobility behavior in Europe and helped the electric sector move forward because people who already own EVs are increasing their usage, funnily enough. There's high demand for sustainable mobility, uh, public transport, some trains, planes and buses, uh, not deemed to be a safe way of travelling. So people are using personal transport more and more countries are encouraging the purchase of EVs. The annoying thing is they've put absolutely no uh, data on this in terms of the actual numbers of kilowatt hours, megawatt hours of energy delivered. So it's it's a graph. So we don't know what it actually means, but the graph is going up. It's moving up, which is lovely. So well done, them. Okay, Sunderland is a... Uh, if, you're, if you're not aware, in the north of England, Sunderland is a place where the Nissan Leaf is built. One of three places the Leaf is built around the world. And the Nissan plant in Sunderland will produce a new EV, according to this local newspaper. It's the new Qashqai, and it's going to have e-power. And I didn't know this, and it has been previously announced, but clearly I missed it. Uh, staff at the site, uh, three, 6,000 people work at the Sunderland plant at Nissan, 18,000 people in total in the supply chain have just been told the news that the Qashqai e-power will be made in Europe, but not where, but the rumour is it's going to be there, according to the Sunderland Echo newspaper. The e-power vehicles use an electric motor and a petrol engine to charge the battery. It is a, uh, is a range extender. I hate these cars because there's no plug socket on. So they do really, really well in their home market of Japan. They they are more efficient because the engine can work in its most efficient rev range. But I hate them because they're called EVs. Because an electric motor always drives you forward. And so you get the benefits of an electric motor. That it's quick, it's torquey, it's quiet, great. <sighs> but very, very small battery which is constantly being cycled, of course, charged and discharged by the engine, which is inside it, working as a generator. And I wouldn't mind it if they put a plug on them, but there's no plug. The only way to move forward is to add petrol, like the no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. The only move if you burn stuff. And of course, they can do some fancy regen, etc., etc., and recover some energy, which is all... It's all well and good, but that's a fringes. We don't care. Like that, that's nice. That's that is just a cherry on the cake. We want to be able to put clean green electrons into a car. So I get, I get. Like my brain understands why these e-power cars work, but <laughs> my heart hates them. Okay, moving on. Elon Musk just confirmed Tesla is expanding its full self-driving software in beta to Canada and Norway. Boom, for my listeners there, looking forward to it. For now, the update is only available to a few very select Tesla uh, Twitter influencers who are all posting nice things about the beta version. But Elon Musk says the next markets to get full self-driving will be Canada and Norway, according to Electrek. If they are sending it to Norway, one of my favorite YouTubers, uh, Bjorn Nieland, Newland, is um, he doesn't hold back. Like, check out his recent video on phantom braking. Like, he's having real problems with phantom braking on his Tesla, and he's owned many of them. And he, like, his username is Tesla Bjorn. He loves the brand. Um, but if it's bad, he'll say it's bad. And that's why I like him. So, uh, launching in new markets can be challenging as different markets have different road markings and signs and regulations. So, Good luck there. Final story today. In Europe, strict regulations have limited Tesla's autopilot abilities. We're not talking about, you know, full self-driving here, but even what the car can do without full self-driving. But add on the full self-driving suites, and it's incredibly difficult to see how that is worth the money that they're charging at the moment in Europe. But those regulations will change, and then I think it'll be, you know, more capable. We'll use it more like you get in the U.S. Vehicles sold here are unable to handle as many situations as the software in the U.S. Now, a, a researcher, Ferdinand Dudenhofer, director of the Center for Automotive Research in Germany, is saying that regulations for autonomous cars are actually progressing too slowly. And the number of accidents travelled per kilometre has actually been growing here in Europe. And this research organisation say that if you just took the basic autopilot suite of 
of uh, hardware and software that Tesla have, you could reduce incidents because it's just better than humans. According to the website Benzinga.com, the Institute has calculated that of the 281,000 road traffic accidents reported in Europe, actually... Uh, sorry, in Germany, that actually Germany could be down to just 30,000 accidents because so many of them are in situations where the computer and the car, if all cars had, this is, if all cars had Tesla's technology, it, it would just be 80, an 80% 80 reduction, uh, which is interesting, which is what I've been saying a long time about this technology. It's very, very, very good. It gets us most of the way there. There won't be robo-taxis for a long time. You won't be falling asleep on cross-country trips, but we'll get most of the way there, and it will make all of our roads safer so it's an amazing thing an interesting bit of research actually like you know what if all cars had this tesla technology well it'd be pretty good so anyway. right that's your show for today great news today really positive day of ev news i love doing this love doing this show just give me a little buzz every day of uh, going through positivity uh, in a world that is at times a little negative uh, by the way if you're voting or have been voting uh, in, in the US. Hope it all went well. We're thinking of you. Whoever you wanted to win, we will wait and see. Uh, if you want to leave a little review on iTunes, that'd be amazing. That'd be wonderful, please, uh, because it really helps grow the show. And if you can ever check out my Patreon, it's patreon.com slash evnewsdaily. Helps fund the show. Uh, Phil Roberts of Electric Future, what a great name for a company, uh, is, uh, is a premium partner of the show. Brad Crosby is as well. Avid Technology, Porsche of the Village in Cincinnati, Audi of Cincinnati East, Volvo Cars of Cincinnati East, NationalCarCharging.com and AlohaCharge.com. Derek Riley of the EV Review Island YouTube channel. Check out his recent scooter review. And Richard at rsimons.co.uk, the electric vehicle specialists who has uh, several Model S's that I would quite happily have in my driveway uh, right now, if it was at all possible. Um, have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. And remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.